In this ICS Connects interview, I talk to Lynn Louis Smith about the future of convention bureaus and how destinations can embrace hybrid conferences. So listen in and let's explore the future of exchange. Hello and welcome to ICS Connects. I'm here today with Lynn Louis Smith, who's the Chief Executive Officer for Business Events Sydney, um, and in my opinion, quite a visionary in the field, um, and especially when it comes to how to position destinations um, in the international business events industry. Um, Lynn, thank you for being with me today, and thank, thanks for sharing your knowledge. Uh, my pleasure. Always great to see you. Excellent. Um, Lynn, let me dive quite right into it and just ask you first, kind of like, how did COVID-19 impact Sydney for 2020 and also 2021 when you look forward now for about a year? Yeah, well, COVID-19's impacted the whole world, hasn't it, really? <laughs> no um, kidding. Gosh, we have seen um, cities just shut down overnight. I, I remember sitting in my office on March eight, I think it was, and by March 13, I had my entire workforce working from home. Yeah. Um, my international offices already work from home, but, uh, and then on March 18, the government shut the whole city down and we went uh, full on into crisis mode, into hibernation. Um, we're now in stabilisation and um, coming out into recovery. And so very much into um, looking at how we reopen the business events industry here in Sydney and in Australia. Um, and I know many cities around the world. So it's affected everyone. It's had catastrophic effect of our industry. Um, I think our industry out of many has been affected the most. And as we were the first to shut down, we're probably going to be one of um, few that will come out of this a bit slower than others. Um, but we're seeing, certainly seeing the green shoots come um, from Sydney. And I think that with our minister and through our New South Wales Health Department, we'll be up and running at least by August, September, with obviously strict guidelines and protocols. Um, and you know, consumers and clients want to feel safe and comfortable. So I think 2020, at the end of this year, we'll see the domestic market open up and people start travelling across our state borders. And potentially by September, New Zealand will open up as what we're calling the bubble with Australia. And then generally, I think we'll, we'll move to the Asia region and see where those other cities have handled the heck of, the, the health and economic crisis really well and, you know, how we can start looking at where our trade is and, and opening up those borders and um, having people visit Sydney and Australia again. Um, so 2020, we pretty much wrote off from an international standpoint. We don't see the borders opening up really until maybe mid next year in yeah. some volume capacity, um, but Asia Pacific first. We're gonna have the biggest year ever next year in 2021. As you know, Figo, um, we're still hoping we'll come yeah. in October next year. Um, we have Europe, the biggest AI meeting in the world and a few others. So it will happen. It'll happen in a different format. I do believe the hybrid um, model will sustain us. Uh, so yeah, you know, with, um, a crisis comes opportunity and we're revisiting and reviewing everything as a city and as um, a business at the moment. It's so great that you just mentioned hybrid and um, let's talk about next year because when we, we will probably see quite a few hybrid meetings uh, happening next year or still online meetings, right? So some of them moved online completely. Uh, I think next year, hopefully many of them will go the hybrid route with the real kind of like the life component to it. So um, Sydney has always been, in my opinion, on the forefront of really valuing the business events industry and going way beyond heads in beds. Um, mm -hmm. How do you feel about online and hybrid meetings? Like how can, let's, let's stick with hybrid for now, because how could hybrid events actually be an added value to a destination? How could a destination make the most out of a hybrid event? Um, mm -hmm in that sense? What's your opinion yeah. on that? What's your thoughts? I, I had a, you know, when the sort of the, the technology was enforced upon us to have all these Zoom meetings, I sort of reflected 
you know, at IMEX one year, um, 10 years ago, I think it was probably 2010, we were talking about, and, and the whole industry was talking about how technology was going to take over face to face. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> it did a little, yeah. but it didn't happen, right? Yeah. Trust okay. forward 10 years, it is here. It has disrupted us like nothing before. Um, and I think it's here for good. I do believe that many of um, every business around the world has found a way of working through Zoom and other technology to um, communicate uh, and beam their content to the world. I do not believe that it will replace face-to-face. -face. I do think the next normal or the new normal will be the hybrid. And the reason I say that is because associations and companies have seen that they can have much greater reach across the world. Uh, and they can prepare their content um, and engage with a global audience far greater than the face-to-face -face audience at the pre, during and post stage. Um, and, you know, that's been in content and professional development and knowledge to, to the world that, you know, to an audience that you wouldn't normally have in that face-to-face -face environment. So I do think it's staying here forever. Mm -hmm. And from a destinations um, standpoint, I mean, I'm talking to and I'm advocating for our national broadband network to be fast track. So we have the best technology solutions for events when they come here. And from a destinations point of view, I see that as Sydney's brand being beamed to the world, where normally it would be a captured audience and people would be in Sydney experiencing everything that we have to offer, but the content and our, um, our knowledge, our industry strengths um, and our people that we put on the stage are being to a broader audience and, and that then positions you as a destination and, and increases the awareness of your business and innovation brand, not just your visitor and tourism brand. So I see it as a win-win for both um, the client and the destination. Would that, in a sense, kind of to really make uh, a, a virtual audience appreciate what's going on in Sydney, um, yeah. don't you feel it would probably be even more important to kind of also get out of the uh, convention center more and yeah. maybe uh, do things from some of your great institutions, from hospitals, like um, showcase some of those um, innovation centers that you do have uh, mm. and not just talk about them, right? I, I feel there is maybe more of an opportunity to really move conferences into the city rather than just talking about what's going on in the city. Um, and that then lets the online audience also experience a little bit more and might give a destination even more exposure. Yeah, we, we trialed this the other day. We're calling it the virtual yeah. site inspection. So you yeah. think of... Um, many medical meetings that might want technical tours or satellite okay. meetings, we can take that now to a bigger audience through the virtual world. Um, so you could be on that group travelling to a medical centre, but we're actually going to film that for the virtual audience. Uh, yeah. And I think you know, if we can get the technology right, we can take anyone around the world to anywhere um, on these technical tours with the physical group as well. I think, I think that's really exciting. This is innovation, it's pivoting, it's, it's really reimagining what an event looks like. I couldn't agree more. And I think one of the reasons why I want to have the conversation with you on this is really because I feel Sydney has done for a while now, uh, has got, taken steps into the right direction of seeing uh, delegates more than heads in beds, but yeah. valuing uh, uh, what else it can bring to a destination and some of this expertise knowledge um, exchange it's so important can still happen in a virtual environment right so uh, as yeah. soon as we realize what other values those delegates have and what other values those conferences bring to our destination I think we can look at it from a very different perspective and all of a sudden realize value that we didn't do before like it's just not the tours they take but the brain power they bring in and the brain power we can still have in a virtual yeah. environment right and the exchange and promoting sydney maybe as a research hub that people are attracted to again could be promoted through the virtual environment and not just through a live meeting 
Yeah, and those relationships can continue through the virtual environment as well. Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you. Yeah, and yeah, I, I think it's it's exciting and it's important to look at it um, from a from an opportunity perspective. Um, mm -hmm. That said, like um, we talked a little bit, what the role of of you as Business Event Sydney would be in that, but do you do you envision moving forward that a convention bureau like like yours, like I know you're more than a convention bureau, but um, would need different partners moving forward. Like right now, we have the traditional partners of hotels and venues and uh, service providers. Do we need to look further at some point and include other professions and, and people? Yeah, well, absolutely. I think, um, I think first and foremost, if we can put our customer and what they're trying to achieve um, and understand their pain points, then you can bring not only technology, but the partnerships on a journey to help them solve that problem and to create an ad value. So I've always thought, you know, our purpose is to secure global meetings and we do that through the bid process, but we do that with a diverse group of stakeholders from the public and private sector. So you've got your, your supply chain in terms of your tourism industry and they're your value proposition for that portion of delivering an event and delivering a great experience for um, the delegate and visitors. Uh -huh. But it's your academia, your, your key knowledge experts, it's government is having you know, um, relationships right across every portfolio. So no matter what industry that event's coming in, you've got the policy makers um, and the key influencers and decision makers of what's happen what happens in your state and your country and can influence global outcomes as well. The private sector is really important. I think the big end of town for us are very influential and can bring things to the table that maybe we wouldn't have thought of by ourselves um, and then you've got the not-for-profit sector obviously where your, your local bid um, host is liaising with the international association so I see B Sydney as the uber connectors what we do is we understand the objectives of the international association their pain points and then I and my team bring everybody around the table to ensure that we deliver value and impact and we alleviate the pain points. And I, and I mentioned technology. I think one thing that we are doing at this point in time, it gives you an idea to reimagine what you can offer a client. So we have a significant digital transformation project in the pipeline at the moment. And it's all about identifying the customer journey and the pain points and how we can look at technology as a solution to some of those pain points. Um, so this whole COVID thing has given us an opportunity once again to reimagine the organisation, the role that we play in securing global meetings and the importance of those meetings for our state and our country. Will you, I mean, I, I know it might be a difficult question to answer, but considering kind of like the hybrid component now and kind of like the, the um, um, that that's probably the way of the future moving forward, uh, do you think you you will evaluate which kind of business you go after slightly differently than you did before? I think so, yeah. yeah. It's just like when we didn't have a convention centre for three years, most people know that we um, demolished and then rebuilt. It was an opportunity to, again, reimagine. Um, I think the, you know, there are different models of convention bureau around the world, but I think the future focused sustainable model will be one that's integrated into the economic development framework and delivers not only for the visitor economy, but also its knowledge and innovation economies in its country. Um, and the broader set of measures is really important here. You mentioned, you know, heads and beds before, we need to think about the broader set of measures. How do, we me how do we measure the industry growth and the knowledge economy? How do we measure the impact from attracting global talent? How do we measure the foreign direct investment and the impact that has on a destination? And then the trade deals that are done for you know, our, um, our international engagement and our supply chain. I think 
um, we have such a big role to play in the agenda of our state and our country, and we have to all engage the narrative around what I've just communicated to ensure that we have that future-focused sustainable model because if, if you can deliver for all your stakeholders and investors, but importantly, have a customer-centric lens over that, um, I think you can have amazing impact for destinations. And I think for us, it's looking at the industry sectors now of the future mm -hmm. and thinking about where that sits in our economic development framework and being very specific about those types of events and the impact that they can have when um, when they happen in Sydney, whether that be face-to-face -face or a hybrid model. I love that. I think it's so incredibly smart and it's really important to be strategic about this and uh, look at the long-term kind of like impact that some of those meetings can have on a destination. So I, I, I feel, um, I, I like, I think you're going in the right direction, but I, I, you've been you've been on that route for many years now. Um, you, you have to keep reimagining and yeah. rebuilding. You know, every, every three to four years, I find myself in this role of, you know, something happens or you lead the change. Um, yeah. Because if we stay the same, we're going to be disrupted. So I've always been um, lead the disruption, don't be disrupted. Yeah. Yeah. That's... that's uh, that's the, that should be the motto for all of us, I think, yeah, uh, especially right now, uh, yeah. Um, with that said, Lynn, like looking forward, like the next two, say, five years, where do you see things personally go? I mean, you touched on a few of those things, but kind of just as a, a final statement, like what is your personal outlook for the next two to five years? What do you think where, where things are going? I wish I had a crystal ball. We all do. That's why I'm asking many people. <laughs> Maybe I find I it one wait. person. <laughs> yeah, I can't wait to um, yeah. you know, listen to the series of interviews that you're doing at the moment. I think it's a fantastic initiative. Thank you. Um, uh, so, ooh, let's see. I think we'll come out of this how we went in. Um, we went into it very quickly. We'll come out of it a bit slower, though. Uh, for for Australia and I think for most um, countries and cities, it'll be back into that domestic market, um, and then it will, you know, the bubbles will open up between countries for um, flights, and I think we'll see international borders opening up more probably to the middle of 2021. Mm -hmm. You know, we're still looking for a vaccine. We may never find one, so we may live in this COVID world forever. So how do we um, travel safely? Um, the hygiene factors I don't think will go away. Um, people's safety and security will be absolutely number one. So I think destinations like Australia who have managed the health and economic crisis will do well, as many others will. Um, I'd like to think 2025, we're all back to normal, but the hybrid will still um, be here and, and, and it should be. Um, I'm, I'm hopeful, I'm optimistic that, uh, you know, we'll all meet again and, and be able to socialise as we have in the past, but there will be protocols and guidelines that we'll have to adhere to, you know, and this is one pandemic, you know, we're living in a world where another one could come our way. All I can say is get your risk register up to speed and when it happens again, you, you, know, you learn from this experience and you'll be able to bounce back a lot faster. Um, I wish I had that crystal ball. No, but I think that's a perfect, no, that's a perfect sentiment. And I, I, I feel like none of us has the crystal ball, but it's, it's good to get a bit of an idea of where everybody sits. And yeah. like, um, uh, it, it kind of gives us uh, some sort of confidence as well, kind of like as we're trying to make our scenarios for the future. Um, yeah. Lynn, this was fantastic. Thank you so much for being available. Um, I think uh, you gave us a lot of food for thought. Um, and uh, I can't wait to continue the conversation with you about some of the projects we're doing together because I feel yes. it's really exciting to now dive into and see how we can actually explore and make the most out of this situation. So yeah. thank you so much. Ben. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Thank you, everyone.